Now we're ready to get, jump into CryEngine and actually have our blend shapes activate inside the character tool. So in my blend player, I have the CDF, and I have the source file, the skin file, the material file, and then the CHR. There is no CHR params because we're not actually driving any real animations. But keep in mind, we actually did create an I underscore calf file. It just references those for the actual blend shapes. So if we go to Tools, Animation, Character Tool, I can go ahead and dock this in the middle. And I also want to go in and say in the Material Editor, if we pop this up, underneath the Objects, Blend Player, Face Material, inside of this, make sure that it's set to a loom. And I've put it to a lower value, so it's a little darker, and then it's gray. Actually, I can put that up just a little bit. So now going into the Character Tool, we can go to our Blend Layer, shrink that up. And I can double click the CDF. So I have joints activated. We can go ahead and turn off the joints. We'll shrink up the display options column. And we'll look at our character right here. So we have a skin attachment right here, which inside of this, we need to have a skinning method that is set to CPU, eight weights, morphs, and normals. Morphs being the most important things. We're just going to set it to CPU slow for right now. And so we'll keep that setting. The next thing is, up top here, we have our blend shapes, and then if we scroll this open, we have hashtag face smile, face wrinkle nose, face brows raise, and these are the actual weights that we can drive. But we notice that we can't do anything. If you just click them, it does nothing, and that's because we need to override the weights. And if I click this now, and I, sh I move this along, you can see that this is how the blend shapes are actually being driven as well inside of the scene. So this gives you a quick view of how you can drive the blend shapes and set them up and then have them in the engine ready to be used inside of a track or a cinematic sequence inside of your game. So looking at this, you can use both joints and blend shapes within your own animated sequences. And keep in mind, this doesn't just have to be a face. You could even have it where, say, somebody is growing or shrinking, changing their body sizes. So think outside the box when using blend shapes because they can be very handy within your game development.